Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, we've got a full house. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to beautiful Los Angeles. Uh, the weather is amazing uh, down here. Uh, you know, it was rainy uh, up in San Francisco for the last couple of weeks, so uh, we were happy that we were able to plan this event down here in beautiful Southern California, and we're glad to see you all here today. Uh, I want to start by uh, first welcoming you and uh, thanking our sponsors. Uh, I'd like to thank our diamond sponsors, Arm and Intel. Uh, without them, we could not make this happen, so let's give a big round of applause for them. Also like to thank our platinum sponsors, Alibaba Cloud, Dell EMC, Ericsson, and Huawei. Thanks again for all your support. So a couple of years ago, uh, we declared that it was the year of open source uh, in networking. Uh, and uh, that has uh, been uh, proven really true. I think today what we're really seeing is in almost, or certainly on every level of the stack, uh, there's an open source project that's innovative and solving big problems and creating value, whether it's you know, at the low layer in data plane services or all the way up into the management and orchestration frameworks, open source is really leading. But this year we're seeing a big shift in the networking sector as it relates to open source. And I wanna just take a couple of minutes to remind us all of just how powerful that is and how we're really at the beginning of the real innovation that is here to come. You know, what, what's really happened is you see all these different open source projects that have come up, whether it's Cord or Open Daylight or more recent projects like uh, ONAP that are really solving these tough problems. The important thing now is that that open source project or collection of projects is being turned into real market solutions. ONAP, as example, is being used in production in operator networks like Bell Canada and AT&T. Open Daylight, another example, is being used to run networks that powers over a billion subscribers. You know, we're really now starting to see industry and the telecommunications sector take this open source and build real solutions on top of it. And what happens when you start building real solutions with open source is you start creating a lot of value. Whether it's in network automation, enabling 5G transformation, whether it's in you know, investment and additional uh, new companies that are invested in to support these open source projects, profit and value is being created and what happens then is that value gets reinvested back in the open source project in the form of new requirements that unearth themselves when, they're being, when that project is being used to run a global operator's networks. It uh, takes the place in terms of new features and services in that project, which then begets better solutions, better commercial products, which begets more value, which begets more code, more innovation, better products and solutions, faster networks, more secure networks, more value, more reinvestment, and you can see how this flywheel really, really happens. And that's really what we're all here to do today, is to invest in making this flywheel, this open source project turning into commercial products and services, creating value that is then reinvested to go faster and faster and faster. And it's working. Uh, and I wanna thank all of you for participating in it and give each of you a round of applause for helping. But we're not stopping there. We've been working on networking and now what we're seeing is new technologies coming in to help networking and all a bunch of other sectors of technology improve. And that's in the area of deep learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, today, the uh, Linux Foundation is announcing uh, the LF uh, Deep Learning Project. Actually, I think it was yesterday. We've got so many different announcements. But uh, this project was announced with 10 uh, initial members. Uh, it has an uh, open source uh, seed project in the Acumos project. Uh, how many people here have heard of Acumos? Can a quick show of hand? If you haven't, go check it out. This is an amazing 
uh, framework for the discovery and sharing of AI models uh, and AI workflows. So this was initially contributed by AT&T and Tech Mahindra, but it's just a tremendously useful tool to be able to take an AI model, deploy it in a production environment, and then share those models with others, whether it's within your organization or other organizations outside of your own. And when we got started on this, we got so much interest in other technologies around AI that we started a whole umbrella organization for artificial intelligence called LF Deep Learning. That's been joined, like I said, by 10 new uh, organizations. Uh, we're going to see more projects in this. Baidu, for example, is contributing their Elastic Deep Learning project. Tencent is bringing in their Angel project. And we'll see more uh, projects to come uh, so go and check out the LF uh, Deep Learning Project. We think this is going to be a big one. Finally, I have uh, one final piece of news from the Linux Foundation, which is a new member of our staff. Uh, today, I'm excited to announce that uh, Jamie Smith is going to be joining the Linux Foundation as our new Chief Marketing Officer. You know, the Linux Foundation this year passed 1,000 members. There are a 1,000 organizations that are working all over the world on the open source projects that the Linux Foundation hosts. It is actually a remarkable amount of work to communicate on an ongoing basis and get people to engage in these projects all over the world. And Jamie brings just the kind of background we need to handle a complex communications task. Her previous roles include uh, the special assistant and spokesperson for President Barack Obama uh, and Deputy White House uh, Press Secretary. Uh, she was the uh, Director of Public Affairs for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence under James Clapper. Uh, she worked as a spokesperson for Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign. Uh, she worked for uh, Madeleine Albright for a number of years, former uh, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright at the Albright Group. Uh, she's got a great tech background, also working for a blockchain organization recently called Bitfury, also heading up uh, the Global Blockchain Business Council. Uh, she's worked in the PR arena. Uh, she has uh, handled some really, really tough communications tasks, and we're happy to have her here to help us communicate to all of you and the thousands of organizations all over the world that we work with. Uh, and she's joining me via Skype from Washington. So welcome, Jamie. Please meet everyone from the uh, Open Networking Summit. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. You'll have to forgive me. Um, I can't see you, but you can see me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's an honor to be there. I definitely wish I was in LA more than I wish I was in Washington, DC at the moment. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to just say thank you. Um, thank you to Jim and thank you for the opportunity um, to work with all of you. It's such an honor, such a humbling honor to have an opportunity to represent the work that you're doing um, I truly wish I could be at this event. It's, it's designed to not only improve your business, but also make the world uh, more functional and better. And that's my kind of event. So I'm, I'm really just thrilled to have the opportunity. Um, and I just want to take a moment to say that, you know, I joined the Linux Foundation wholeheartedly and with, with just so much excitement because tr the work that is happening across the board is touching literally every single fabric of our society and growing every day. And so I, I just can't imagine a better, a better set of challenges, hurdles, and opportunities for all of us to work together. I truly wish I was there, but I look forward to meeting all of you. And thanks for the opportunity to say hi. Thanks, Jamie. All right. So more news to come, uh, but uh, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Arpit Joshipura, who heads up the Linux Foundation Networking Group. Please welcome Arpit. All right. Networking actually worked. We were scared that the call would not go through. <laughs> All right, uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, Again, I'm honored to be the voice of the community here and really humbled by the progress we have made. 
in just one year, right? Whether it's developers, programmers, mem uh, project managers, program managers, members, executives, end users, you know, you name it. Even press and analysts, you know, they are keeping up with what we do. So it's, it's really, really amazing. Uh, and I think the key here is, you know, the willingness to work together has really made a difference. So I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, excited about this event. Uh, we're more today than we were at the previous ONS, so that's really exciting. And we're not even in the Bay Area, we're in Hollywood, right? So that's really exciting. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the progress, and um, you know, I'll, I'll show you where we are heading next. So a year ago at ONS, I sort of gave out two messages. One was uh, networking, let's make networking cool again, okay? And let's harmonize, harness, and consume. And what that meant really was, let's all work together within networking, and the key here is within, in terms of you know, open source projects, standards, et cetera. And I think we have done a great job, and I want to thank you, right? So the community came together very nicely, and I'll show you some highlights here, but I think everybody here in the audience and people who are listening will uh, agree with me. So please give, your, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Very good. So let me explain a few highlights. Uh, the two most important things that our members were focusing on was, can you merge open source communities that are either adjacent, complementary, or overlapping? And we did that. We did that. The largest merge in the history has been pulled in terms of open source, and that was the eComp and OpenO. With ONAP, now becoming the de facto platform because of the merge, global adoption, et cetera. The other thing we did was we merged six projects into a single LF networking umbrella from a governance perspective while keeping the technical communities independent. And that has been really well received uh, from and, and well coordinated across, across the community. And that was not just within LF. As part of ONS, uh, we announced partnership with OCP, as, as you well know. Uh, last week, uh, and it, it was extremely you know, uh, well-received coming from giants of open source hardware and open source software. And the collaboration is not just on end-to-end -end testing, but also on that common layer of operating systems that touch both hardware and software. Um, we also had an announcement uh, going with ONAP and Cord coexisting in an AT&T access network and the collaboration there. So a lot of good progress. These are just few examples that I want to sort of give out. And that's the open source community. Open standards you know, have really fascinated and the way you know, there is willingness on both sides to make this happen. This was a big sticking point last year. And we started off with collaboration with ONF and you know, standards in the open flow area, et cetera, for sure. Uh, but very soon, we had MEF uh, and o uh, Linux Foundation and ONAP collaborate. And that collaboration allowed us to talk carriers to carriers, you know, the Legato, Interlude, uh, Sonata interfaces that we all love and, and, and we want to go across uh, carriers, right? And that demo was shown by a whole set of member community, very well received. Okay, and then we made even further progress when last week, uh, you know, the baseline P4 uh, was announced as uh, moving or joining both LF networking and ONF led by ONF into net LF networking, uh, and that again shows the pre-harmonization aspect of it, which brings everything together. And then yesterday we announced a TM Forum from an API perspective. So you can see that we are moving forward, we are facilitating, enabling any roadblocks that you know, prevent deployment or prevent our members from collaborating. So we're really excited about that, okay? And why is this really important and why does it matter? Because the community likes it. And so the results are in. Uh, we just touched 100 members in LF networking in less than 100 days. Okay, so this is really exciting because this is like one of the fastest times to get 200 uh, members. And this is just a result of how efficient it is to just become and participate and, and look at multiple projects all in one. So uh, again, thank you very much. So with that said, this is all clubbed under what I call harmonization 1.0, okay? 
And 1.0, again, is within networking both open source projects and open source and standards. And so why is this important? It's all about money. $11 billion is at stake in the next five years. Uh, one of the analyst firms, ACG Research, came out with a report today that has analyzed both qualitatively and quantitatively what it means to be participating in the next five years of spend that the end users are going after. And there are significant you know, data in there, but the one I thought was very interesting was you know, the amount of money at stake. And another key observation uh, that, that I want to sort of highlight here is the future strategic vendors that are participating in this unfair share of, of spend will be the ones that embrace open source, okay? And most of this open source is at the interface layer. It's at the boundaries, right? It is what I have lovingly called the boring part of networks, okay? But that's the most complex and the most important. So with that said, where are we heading? We're heading to harmonization 2.0. And what does 2.0 mean? 2.0 means how networking impacts adjacent areas, whether it's adjacent technologies, adjacent clouds, projects, areas, you name it, right? I don't have a word for it. But what it means is it's not just within networking, it's beyond networking. And so what we have um, looked at as a networking group is you know, how do I get the best of network automation with the best of cloud and container portability? Right? That's kind of the Kubernetes and networking sort of collaboration. How do I get the best of hardware and software to be you know, independent of each other with a layer of uh, operating system that we are announcing today called DANOS, Disaggregated Network Operating System? The interesting thing about DANOS, which the most of the seed code comes from an at and project called DNOS, but the interesting thing is it comes in pre-harmonized with all five of the pieces in the operating system landscape, right? We've had the bright, brightest of the bright come together in a room um, for multiple times and figured out how, say, the Sonic and the Scilayer, how the Stratum uh, and the forwarding layer, how FRR and OpenSwitch and Danos, they all work together, and how the interfaces are all coming together. So, Stay tuned for more details, but we're really excited because we want to go in with a view and an architecture view of how these five um, you know, switches come together, including you know, open switch, and a couple of them are already Linux Foundation projects. Okay? The other area that is in, important to networking is uh, what Jim announced, deep learning, Acumos. Um, and obviously there is a network tie-in for this, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, there is more analytics and machine learning applied to the network automation to get more powerful use cases. And then finally, what was announced, uh, uh, you know, uh, or what, will, uh, what was announced in January, which was the Acrino stack, which is the new edge stack. And you will see some more exciting news around that as well. So again, the key here is the zero touch vision of end-to-end -end services, including next-gen services. So how does it all fit together? I think it's fairly straightforward. For those of you who have seen the architectural vision from, from LF, it's a very simple problem. You have to connect these services at the top to the infrastructure at the bottom, and the middle layers is all disjoint and manual and things like that. And you have a bunch of org, uh, open source organizations working together to create that automation layer and that framework. So we are really excited. And to show harmonization 2.0, um, I, I, I just said, let, let, let's do a quick demonstration on um, you know, one of the projects on how you know, we can see the power of uh, containers and cloud working with network automation. So this is a demonstration of ONAP on, on, on Kubernetes. And effectively, what we have is two high-velocity projects that are coming together. Now, I was going to do the demo live, and then I chickened out, sorry, right? <laughs> I just can't trust myself going down to the CLI and the shell level. So I've done that before, but I'm not going to do it. There's too many engineers here you can, who can see through my fluff. So I'm just going to give you a, a high-level view of what the power is, and then if you need to see the real demo, 
there's a, there's a booth that has the demo going on. So let me just show you where um, some of the interesting things are happening. So this is a dashboard, and this is a cross-cloud CI. So again, remember, CNCF, the umbrella uh, organization, has Kubernetes as a project. There's a cross-cloud team under that that's working on this. On ONAP, you have a team under um, you know, a project called OOM uh, that is working on this, uh, and, and what they do is you know, they work and collaborate on that, plus there's a multi-vim um, or multiple clouds uh, team. So this is a dashboard. All you can see here is on the top, uh, you have all the clouds, so Amazon, Azure, Google, IBM, Bare Metal, OpenStack, et cetera, and Kubernetes and all its projects, including ONAP right here, is uh, what we are gonna show uh, running on, on Kubernetes, okay? So effectively, this is a daily build. You know, you display the test results and, and you know, all sorts of the cloud. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you would end up doing is creating a pipeline. Now, we have taken a portion of ONAP here just for expediting thing, um, and, and it takes the latest Amsterdam release. For those of you who are familiar with ONAP, 1.1.1. And, and all we are gonna do is, you know, is create this pipeline here. And so let's say uh, the pipeline gets started, you know, and, and it has its, what it's doing is ONAP has its own CI system. Uh, they have a release build system, the two talk, and now you take the co uh, orchestrator, put it down for testing, and now you're gonna sort of compile this. I can't put the laser pointer all the way there, but that's fine. Um, and then it starts compiling. And then in about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, this whole thing uh, builds, uh, takes the latest version. The next thing that happens is Kubernetes starts deploying in parallel across all these clouds, right? And it runs in parallel, right, which is what we want. And then when completed, that task gets to uh, deploying the own app on each of these cloud service providers, right? And once that happens and you know, it's going to run through its completion, um, you get to everything is good to go. So let's kind of look at the uh, couple of clouds. So let's say if I go and look at the AWS portion of it, uh, here's your uh, console output here. Obviously, I'm not expecting anybody to read this. Uh, the key here is it's, it's kind of AWS, where ONAP has been deployed with the Amsterdam release. All the tests have passed, so these are healthcare checks, health checks, uh, uh, consoles, logins, uh, database services, things like that, and, and kind of, uh, you know, if you, let's take OpenStack, for example, here. If you sort of double-click into that, that console looks similar. You know, it's, it's just uh, simple enough, right? So my point here is um, you now have an example of how, you know, cloud portability and you know, Kubernetes comes in, and our container portability, and uh, ONAP, our projects like ONAP can take advantage of, right? Now, this is again a demo, and you know, we'll work with the community and, and make this happen, but I thought it is interesting to just show you the power of how Harmonization 2 and two open source projects can come together. And of course, you, know, you can contact Dan or uh, the cross-cloud team at the booth. Uh, and of course, special thanks to the ONAP team in, in the Amdocs uh, organization. So that's it. And then one final slide. Uh, I have to put this up. This is my favorite slide. And we just updated it. So there was a slide here last year. So the two updates I want to show is uh, as harmonization two happens, we are now beyond the networking, we are you know, going across multiple other projects. Um, and so we have emphasized the lower layer of the stacks, if you may, with the operating systems and how they all fit together. We've also emphasized not just Linux Foundation projects, but the Linux Foundation projects that are part of networking, as well as Linux Foundation and uh, non-Linux Foundation projects. So they, they all come together. And I, I know it is hard to understand how they, you know, how they harmonize, but once you participate in the community, it's a really, really powerful thing to do, okay? So uh, that's kind of the start of ONS and my statements, and thank you all for coming. <laughs>